so um welcome to the episode uh with um with me uh i i'm sorry kind of started uh, off with um, sort of a a little catching on on what we were going to talk about and i i'm still having the giggles welcome to today's episode i know it's been a while since um i've done a session uh because if you've been listening or at least to some of the previous uh, episodes that i've done for the manifest with me sara patrana you do know that i kind of want to always uh, talk about topics that we don't see a lot on in mainstream media and then i'm also looking at uh, my guest over here who i'll be introducing in a few seconds uh i want to always try and talk about things that uh we don't get a chance to talk about a lot uh i realize that sometimes we sit amongst friends and we do discuss a lot of topics uh and and when we actually have that heart to heart we tend that we, we tend to see that there's a lot of amazing content that we un, uh, unknowingly actually just produce amongst each other and then was why can't we just talk about these things so in if you have been listening to the manifest you would know that i kind of like to talk about taboo subjects and things that really need to be talked about more than the the usual stuff that we always see on tv or radio so uh, i want to welcome you uh, my uh, my listeners and um i am having the pleasure of catching up with a musical sensation in the room with me in front of me i have garpink he's known for producing some of the catchiest singles of our time such as pose like a queen which has become an anthem for the lgbtqi community he recently um if i'm not mistaken a few maybe a few months ago you released a cover song called fever featuring ranaka and he also has other popular tracks which include sour candy run precious which was his very first uh uh production navati and hate and if you are on spotify please go check them out but carping is not just a talented musician he's also very active in the lgbtq community he believes in creating visibility without focusing on labeling each other and he's using his platform to spread this message to his fans so if you're interested in hearing from a talented artist uh, who said to make waves in the music industry while championing a meaningful meaningful cause then sit back and enjoy this episode welcome ga i'm going to go with ga you okay with that right uncle cool anything about <laughs> <laughs> awesome so how are you feeling today i know that uh, we had a little conversation on our way yeah. uh, on our way here um so tell me how do you feel um i feel nice it's been a while that i'm here at surya village so yeah and also i'm really grateful that um i'm having a conversation with someone in a long, long after time. a long time uh because of the pandemic yeah. and like all this uh situation in the country like you know people were like not only musicians and mm-hmm. artists and other people were like you know struggling with a lot of things and uh, i think now things are getting back to normal with uh some of the difficulties but then again yeah everything is <laughs> hanging better than there. before yeah yeah so yeah I, i think it's a good day okay glad um, to hear that yeah <laughs> Let's look forward to the rest of the day. And uh I'm excited also because uh I think uh, you might remember I've been trying to book this woman with you for like months. Yes. It's probably even close to a year if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I felt really bad because uh, because uh right now where we're recording at is at Surya Village Recording Studio and I used to be in Colombo before that. Mm-hmm. But uh for a year and about 2 months I've been based outside of Colombo so it kind of makes it difficult. I, I don't want to do a lot of zoom sessions mm-hmm. i kind of really enjoy this you know one to one and yeah. i think that's why i wanted to I make this so. happen so um since uh i'm sure there are a lot of viewers out there who or oh, listeners even who are not familiar with you i would like to go back in time and maybe can you tell us a little bit about um what you do apart from music and how did you get into it like what was uh, what was this something that you aspired to do Did you ever think that you were going to produce songs how did that come about Well to be honest with you I was actually a bathroom singer like like a lot of people <laughs> yeah. out there right. so Yeah and 
um i didn't actually like uh wanted to produce music mm. back in time but then again um um i have actually like talk about it in another session uh-huh. um but not uh specifically not not in detail right but i think it's it's hard time for me to talk about it because uh that's what actually like inspired me mm-hmm. because there are a few things actually got me inspired so um i am a very big fan of lady gaga mm-hmm. um lana del rey uh-huh. i like her um style in right. writing and stuff and of course gaga's like you know all this costume mm. and like the makeup and like the vibe and everything yeah. and there are like a few other underrated as artists like Sef Delisa and um, so many mm. because i can't name yeah, all of sure, them right yeah. now but then again like those are the like you know main um people that i got inspired from mm-hmm. so and uh, i really wanted to like you know um uh I I'm kind of a performer if I uh tell you the truth because um I don't think like you know I have seen many artists like out there um and um uh, I have seen people if you have money you can be an artist mm-hmm. kind of a mm-hmm. thing the, the going ways, on the path is exactly to get there, yeah. so um but I always wanted to like uh do some quality work when it comes to like anything in your life you you actually have to like uh look into deep and like you know you have to work for it yeah so um it was like around 2014 that i uh, broke up with my um ex mm. and it came to a point that um it uh, i was in a polyamorous relationship so i think i really want to reveal about it like you know yeah yeah just because it's it. it's um i have seen people are doing a lot of things but they don't talk about mm-hmm. it but i think it's it's okay yeah, to like yeah. you know uh, share your thoughts and like you know exactly. talk about your feelings and experiences and stuff so i was in a relationship with a bisexual person i don't mm-hmm. want to label that person mm-hmm. as a bisexual person but then again like you know in terms of like you know so because i i identify myself as a non binary person uh-huh. so because i have i had no clue about myself my what my gender identity mm-hmm. is um when it comes to like in 2000 until 2020 Yes. Okay. So that's quite recent. Um yeah, I but I I didn't struggle with it. Mm-hmm. I knew that I'm like, you know, I didn't want to like uh express that in in a way where people say that, you know, like I have seen like many other documentaries people are talking about like I felt very different and stuff. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. felt any difference. You were just the way you are and I you I have, felt like yeah. I'm not alone because Right. Um, So in a sense you kind of had a support system or rather you didn't have anybody at home who to judge you or to control in that sense so you were comfortable in your skin. I was going through a rough patch. Oh okay. But then again like you know um I was okay with it mm-hmm. because um in early uh like around 2010s like you know like when I was schooling also like I had the best time in my life at mm-hmm. school. Okay. So I love my school. because um it was there like you know discrimination and people are being homophobic mm-hmm, and like you know mm-hmm. people are like they've been judging other people and all it was there like it's it's, it's still it's there but then yeah, again uh i was having fun with my friends <laughs> yeah. like you know but what i realized was like i'm not doing any any sort of a bad thing any dirty work or anything it's just me being myself and like mm-hmm. you know having fun uh, smiling can i know what school you went to um I went to two schools. Okay. So I don't want to like you know tell that okay I did my this mm-hmm. thing at this school and blah 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 and stuff. So earlier my my I actually did my levels in a uh school there uh based in Borella. Okay. Um it's uh Susamewardana Mahavidyalaya. Okay. So and I did my L levels in Royal College Colombo. Okay. So 
and I felt the difference. You know, um, uh, difference means like you know people might think that okay the class difference or this and that, but not like that. I felt like I'm really comfortable, and uh, I actually felt myself when I was doing my A levels okay. at uh, Royal College. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not about that. I'm okay. Like people might think that okay this person is talking about Royal College mm-hmm. and like you know this and that. I know what you mean. But to be honest with you, yeah. I was I felt free. You were comfortable. I was that. really comfortable mm-hmm. because um at school we used to be like plastics. <laughs> you know like in mean like in mean girls. So yeah. um it's like um it was that much of uh freedom was mm-hmm. there because mm-hmm. uh people treated like you know other people very equally mm-hmm. and they never are like they are like here and there yeah, people yeah, are like yeah. like you know Yeah, they can't yeah. keep their mouth shut, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was really cool. And then again, um, getting back to um, 2014, mm. I think I've been like you know, um, I've been in love with this person for such a long time because um, when it comes to my uh, relationships and stuff, um, I've been dating few people. Yeah. Um, but then again like i never felt this much happy and this much um confident and this that much of an energy with towards someone uh before mm-hmm. so this person actually helped me out with my uh music career okay uh, not directly right indirectly but so after we broke up only i started uh, uh i actually released my very first single precious right. so it's it's over here oh you know, yeah the tattoo oh, right. and all yes i did notice so, that so um it precious is all about my ex um and um it was on uh, sfm home ground okay and you know how precious came up was I actually uh there was this uh show called All Control Show. Okay. Uh, few of these uh community and people are not like you know gender non confirming right. people were like you know got together and like uh did this show for like twice. Okay. And the first one happened in 2014. So um I met Yasmin Yusuf. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's the host. Um yeah. Yasmin is the host. for of homegrown is mm. a homegrown so when i met her uh, when i met yasmin um ga you should actually like you know release your own singles and stuff so then i came to be like you know i have written some stuff but yeah i'll work on it mm-hmm. so then again uh, i released precious like in 2017 and it was on the chart for like three weeks i guess but like okay. i think it's kind of a um Oh that's interesting. Accomplishment that yeah. uh, I was also to to I mean, I, I wasn't aware of the alt control shift but I did read about it I yes. in, your, in your article. And uh, now that you say that it was with the help of ESFM right that they put it through. Yes. Th- that's really good. In those times so to think that they would uh, come up with that concept. Yeah. We should you should see more of that coming up in yes. the But the thing is now they are like you know people are in different mm. other countries and they have to move on because of the uh, reason yeah, a lot of personal yeah. reasons as well. And over that time, I uh, I really wanted to like perform so in public. Mm-hmm. Then again, I met with Grace. Okay. Um, she is uh, she is the person who's. Um, Uh, doing this open mic nights. Oh, okay. Uh the how there's this uh Instagram page called House of Grace like people can actually go and see cool. all these uh yeah, other people are performing mm-hmm. and all. So and cool. I was really comfortable enough to like, you know, I I still remember the very first day I performed at Tea Talk in Narahampeta. <laughs> okay. That was my very first experience. All right. and then again i got this hype and like yeah, you know perform yeah, for other yeah. open mic nights and all and then i met with uh, ursula who does who actually did open mic nights 
also mm -hmm. and then artistry um, um gihani and mevan uh, and then i performed with this band called break free okay also but i didn't want to like be a band member mm -hmm. because like you know for personal reasons but then again like you know i didn't have much time to like commit and i felt like it's a bad thing to do because if you don't committed with whatever the thing that you mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. like you know yeah yeah Instead if you are a long way. like if you are a individual that's mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. you can do things but then if you are part of it then you have, you have to commit exactly. and at least make an effort yeah and then um colombo people got to know me uh as an artist so i have very very small fan base in <laughs> colombo but then again like people were like telling me like you should reach to all these reality yeah, shows exactly. and stuff but i had a very bad experience when it comes uh -huh. to a reality show then i didn't want to get involved with it mm -hmm. until recently uh because um in 2015 or 16 i applied for this reality uh show and they called me and one of this person was in the community itself i think it's it's um community uh, the, the stigma in between the community also is still there and it's mm. the worst so this person called me and said that um hi i know you i have seen you performing and blah 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 and singh he was like mm -hmm. uh oh makan nang enno ko and like you know i'm like <laughs> why do you have to wear a frock and come for an like audition yeah because like okay if that person you don't have to tell someone else like you know mm -hmm. do do this this and mm -hmm. that and come mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because i want to feel comfortable yeah, in my own skin exactly. and whatever the whatever that i'm wearing or the makeup and everything and i felt like i didn't want to uh if i want to market myself mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. such a way i didn't want to like i really want to feel proud about it rather yeah. than be a shame about it right yeah, yeah. so i said no because i didn't want them to market me in a bad yeah. way because those days like i was actually at school and like you know, not right, not, right. not in school but then again like it was i was very yeah, young yeah, and yeah. like you know and carefree mm -hmm. i didn't want to have a bad influence on yeah. me so and i said that's no that's a shame why <laughs> why do you th that's still something that really doesn't read me this this stigma still within the community mm -hmm. why is that why is that sense of uh, hostility now and then kind of creeps up and why do um, you think that is no the thing is darling if you go behind it and like you know if you want to find the real reason about it you get you go nuts <laughs> So so it's better be, better off without it then. Yeah, there are certain things that you should never talk about, mm -hmm. but then again like you have to talk mm -hmm. about the stigma mm -hmm. between yeah, the community. Yeah. It's really it's a first exactly. thing ever. But I think like most of the times what I see is like you know, I think it's because of their insecurities, not even in the community, mm -hmm. even uh, even outside the community, people are like struggling with a lot of things. but then i suppose it makes sense because whether it's that community or any other you know the general public i think that's the whole that that kind of uh, experience it everybody in general is criticizing you exactly. whether you do good or bad it doesn't necessarily need to be need to do anything with your gender orientation i don't but then yeah i don't yeah. tell you that criticism is fine mm, okay yeah Yeah, because there's constructive criticism that could would come in useful at some exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. But why can't you act at least like I have seen like people mm. sharing like as an example I'm not telling people to like you know my friends to like share my content mm, mm. but I have seen when it when I go to uh social media I have seen people sharing other people's mm. work. Yeah, yeah. And they don't really care about whether they are cisgender or like in the community yeah, or exactly. whatever. but they don't even when i when i even request them to like share mm -hmm. my content but that's the thing it shouldn't it's an, it should be a no brainer you don't need to tell them exactly they should they should probably I, just but, but the thing is what i felt was like they think if they share like content like that someone an, as an example mm -hmm. an artist who is who, like you know who is visible and in the community mm. so they might think that okay mom make a share or if i share this they will, like you know i'll be judged or 
Uh, people might think that I'm also gay yeah, yeah, or yeah, lesbian yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, can't shake that off. I suppose with some people, isn't it? Okay, so um, I, well, it's always insightful to talk these things, and I think you know we have we have so much to talk about exactly. and so less time. But then again, we yeah. just you know I think we will just uh, reflect a bit more on your work on your on your musical uh, projects. Okay. I know that very recently you did Fever. Mm-hmm. Why did you select that cover, and how did it come about? I understand that you're a good friend with Rana. I've mm. seen your photos and your very beautiful Im- images that you share on Instagram and other socials. How did that uh, collab come about? So Rana and I, we our friendship is goes. Um, it's we've been friends for a long, long time. We've been. Uh, together at school when mm. uh, when I when I was doing my A levels, so uh, he's my best friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this uh, all singlish mm. uh, covers initiative came up from him. So oh, like okay. he's the one who was like you know um, one day he called me and like he was like, Gan, why don't you do this uh, uh, song in singlish because I know your uh writing skills are better mm-hmm. so why don't you give a try so the very first track uh he asked me to do like let's do a cover with fever okay and uh, when we were talking about it i told him that like i really wanted to do, do this song sour candy in single also i know so uh, he said like, yeah that's also a very nice song like you should you should actually like work on it as well And then again, it was I. I actually took one hour, okay, and I wrote "Sour Candy" in singer. Oh right, okay. And he was actually <laughs> impressed. Like, okay, he got it. Good. <laughs> and then uh, I did uh, "Fever" also. So, just for our listeners, "Fever" is uh, a song by uh, du- Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa, right? Yeah. So, and um, because I have seen many people are doing. Uh, Hindi covers mm. in Sinhala, oh, yeah. Sinhala versions of Hindi songs, <laughs> yeah. but I have seen many people doing mm. um, English. English English songs yeah. in Sinhala. So I really wanted, but like I didn't want to like translate the song. Mm, mm, mm. I just wanted to get the vibe, and I I write my own songs. Right. So that's how it came up, and uh, I think um, we. And he also said that I want to be a part of it. I want to sing the songs. And then I can okay, let's do it. Yeah. Like you know, and then it uh, it came up like we. Uh, I recorded it in two thousand twenty twenty one. I I guess. Oh okay. Yeah, but I didn't release Released, it yeah. because of the you know the current situation in mm-hmm, the country mm-hmm. and stuff and like you know people. So, and. Uh, most of the covers i actually recorded at, with my uh, at my friend's place right dan he's been very kind enough mm-hmm. to like you know help me out and support right. me with my music career and uh, that's how it came up and i'm i'm actually like working on few other tracks okay. on this uh, ep mm-hmm. um i called, do you have an album coming up or anything like that uh, that you want there's this um cover album coming up uh, called lilac I named it right. Lilac. Yes. So uh, already three s- cover songs are released. Navati uh, is the cover of uh, Lana Del Rey's Thirteen Beaches mm-hmm. and Fever, and then again Sour Candy, and there are a few other songs are coming up before my debut album, and also one of my debut, uh, uh, one of the singles from my debut album also. Like I'm trying to release it for this year, Pride, mm-hmm. the audio. I was actually struggling with doing the video. With all the expenses and stuff, yeah. so it's very tough. But I might release it. So cool! Definitely looking forward to it. I need to tell our listeners uh, if you are on Spotify. Uh, I think uh, it's on iTunes as well. iTunes as well. Uh, the songs that the names uh, that I had mentioned earlier. I think I'll just repeat them again. We have Precious, Pose Like a Queen, Run, Navati, Hate, Fever. So yes. far, right? The really. Awesome, awesome numbers! You have got to give them a listen. So I think by the end of the episode, we'll share, we will tell the listeners, um, we'll give them your handles, social media handles. Thank you. But yeah, I was really impressed. Even with the quality of the production, it's really good. Thank you. No, really, like genuinely, and I, I really hope that 
you could like put them out into the mainstream they really have to go <laughs> out i mean it's just going to be such a shame if not um another thing is uh gana obviously now when compared to how maybe now you said you were on the scene from 2014 16 17 now now that there's a lot of we have the gen z's we have a different mm-hmm. generation we have youth who are really very ambitious and you know they they have this they're in a different kind of economy they know what they want they are very um observant mm-hmm. they have a voice right we have digital media that has kind of overtaken we have all of these platforms people are more active now mm-hmm. when they come to you know the content creation or even just putting something out there sharing a message right it was like it wasn't like before you just read something on a newspaper or a magazine and you can't if you want to comment on something you just write a letter to the editor mm-hmm. but then you know you don't know when it'll go out mm-hmm. we were a passive uh, sort of audience at the time mm-hmm. and now it's more active you know with all of these platforms we've also noticed how tiktok for example has propelled a lot of this music out there so how is your uh, use of social media when it comes to very uh, bad <laughs> why don't you try sort of tiktoking your way a little bit with i have a tiktok account yeah. but then again like you know i don't know i'm very bad when it comes to like social media and stuff i don't even upload a picture with a <laughs> filter the, no you know the reason i'm saying is because there there have been some amazing songs that have been com- coming out through tiktok like tiktok kind of gave it that you know level of fame or whatever um are you sort of uh you know like uh, do you keep up with any of the new artists so anybody who's coming out i'm not talking about sri lanka but globally uh, are you sort of uh, do you keep up with anybody these days i have few friends uh-huh. but uh, like mm, no uh, i meant as an artist maybe from the us or uk and anybody like that that you kind of uh no not yet okay. but like you know Sri Lankan people the artists based in other countries mm, that okay. I have been like talking to them and like you know they've oh, been supporting with me with the mm. uh, people that I should get uh connected connect to with um but uh, you know like um there's this is one of my really close friend called Els her music is amazing what's her name again Els how do you uh, E L S exactly okay so she's been uh I'm really fond of her. She's been mm. very supportive from the day one. She is one of the part of this all control shift as oh, well. Oh right, okay. So but I'm also telling her that we should like, you know, collaborate one mm. day. But then again, she's also busy with like a lot of things, family and stuff, work and all. Mm. Um and um what I say is like uh let's talk about the Gensies and how they <laughs> like, you know, react to all this. Yeah. Yeah. I think everything is changing and like you know and all these platforms like TikTok can make like a lot of community people to like you know come out mm. themselves mm. like you know come out from their shells. Yeah, exactly. And they don't have to like fake it anymore. They just do whatever. Mm. But like have you seen any like really quality content on TikTok when it comes to Sri Lankan people? No, right? Not not that I can say. Yeah. Not yeah. like not that much. Yeah, yeah. Like okay i have seen like you mm-hmm. know funny mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. out there but other than it's that is the typical sort of exactly uh, other than that and, yeah. very it's very rare that you see quality content but like educational purposes of course mm-hmm. i have seen mm-hmm. because i i i do check them right. out even though i'm not yeah you just have a glance exactly. then yeah and and the thing is like okay we should talk about like you know music and stuff but then again like we should talk about people's emotions as well yeah that you know like i haven't seen like you know i haven't felt that sort of romance that people are having romance at mm. all because all this like you know with the technological revolution people are like genies people are like you know they are very fast move like forward and like mm-hmm. you know they just like even though they they really like this person the first thing comes to their mind is to like go for a hook up and mm-hmm. see whether mm-hmm. sex is mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. and if you know if the sex is good Then okay no. fine let's <laughs> yeah. get let's be together for like you know a few months and see how yeah. it works so okay fine mm. with that i'm fine mm. with that because mm. that uh, this living together concept also here now yeah. right like even though like you know people people still have like you know yo are oh. they like together you know and the lot so like come on that's yeah, fine yeah, it's yeah. all generation people we have to respect them yeah 
But the fact <laughs> is that I'm on to tell you is that you know, I haven't seen romance. Yeah. I don't see that spiritual connection with. Sadly, yeah. People. I know. I know so. Yeah. I I'm kind of a person like even if I want to actually fall in love with someone I I really wanted to get emotionally attached mm. so I didn't want to be the bad person or like feel sad end of the day so I'm very uh, cautious when it comes to like you know if someone asked me out for a date or something like you know I didn't I really yeah, feel we, like Yeah we tend to have that sort of defensive barrier is this really exactly. you know is he really genuine or I mean put the genuinity aside it's going to take a while right but, but then are they the thing is yeah. that the thing also is still, mm. it, it's not there anymore mm. with all these gen c people oh <laughs> right like i hope you also 90s born and I, i was born late late 80s i'm quite old but still, <laughs> yeah but, but i know what still, you mean yeah yeah like you know after no, our me, generation i've been there i know what you what yeah. you mean <laughs> it's been a while oh gosh yeah yeah i know what you mean and um, i hate the whole this whole part of like you know being uh you know okay i'm with this person and all every <laughs> photographs in on social media and like you know you don't have to mm-hmm. it's like you don't have to label yourself and like you know like you can talk about it mm-hmm. like you can talk about your sexual orientation your gender identity like you don't have mm-hmm. to care about like don't give a shit about like mm-hmm. you know whatever the other person thinks Things, about yeah, yourself or yeah. whatever but still like there are certain things there are certain standards that we have to follow that but unfortunately it's like I think it's also to do with the cultural rule book that we've been talking about. But then again, it it, it it directly <laughs> get into that box again. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't want to get involved in that mean. again anymore. Mm-hmm. I haven't been there, mm-hmm. but like, I don't want to. So, are you uh, single at the time? Uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the moment? Really. Okay. Mm. So, just have fun. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, when it comes to uh creating your music like what is your creative process like how do you start do you just do you get words coming to your head you just go about doing it or do you do you look for inspiration is there something in particular other than the artist that you mentioned that inspires you so uh, are you someone are, are you like a fast writer do you like quickly create content when you said like r- writing r- lyrics i think i am yeah like even if you want me to like you know to write to write something just something leave right you here now, and you i'll go and come just give back. me like five minutes to like you know because um i really feel like i really want to like even though like i, I it's like uh, as an example i when i did post like a queen it's the title name of my album yeah. so uh-huh. i i i Previously I wanted to name it as the album I want to name the album as Precious but then again once I wrote Post Like a Queen I felt like okay it's it's makes such kind of a, a statement mm-hmm. and uh, Post Like a Queen is the video that I came out right okay uh, after it was on YouTube then again like you know it make me very comfortable enough to like you know tell the whole right. world okay uh I I do drag and I am non-binary. Mm. I do feel comfortable with makeup, makeup yeah. and my beard and stuff. So how uh, just sorry to butt in. How was the response to the video? It was um people actually liked it. Mm, okay. And uh, they were like um okay, it's different mm, because people mm. haven't seen yeah. a, a Sri Lankan um non-binary person who's uh with a beard and makeup yeah. and all and stuff but like you know uh what i feel like you know if you if you have like you know that kind of courage or like the capacity to like do something to make a difference in someone someone mm. else's life so i'm i'll be so grateful mm. because um i remember i was struggling like and i didn't have anyone to like look forward to any role model or anyone mm. but I feel like I I still I'm getting messages from other people like you know like um I don't call that fake accounts but like you know a lot of people are using two three mm. uh, different accounts to like you know to the specific exactly areas of work so me, yeah. uh they are like telling me that oh my god I'm really grateful that you've been doing this mm. kind of work so it makes me feel 
that I'm that we are also not alone. Yeah. So I think if you are a true artist, what you have to like, you know, you have to make a difference about like, you know, I don't I like, you know, I have seen commercial tracks as well, but okay, go for it. Mm-hmm. I also like mm-hmm. to do commercial tracks, but like, you know, I just want I always wanted to do uh some sort of quality work like mm-hmm. with music and like the originality and the lyrics and like you know yeah, to make yeah. some sort of like you know but yeah that's that's also the purpose of, of an artist in this day and age also i think is to use your platform to the full apart from doing your music or putting out your creation yeah you should try and make a difference and i exactly. think that really does a lot for there are people who really feel inspired and like maybe even have their lives changed with some of the songs or artists that they follow right but mm. unfortunately when i released was like a queen uh i i i really wanted to like put in on all these mm. radio platforms and blah 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 and stuff but the response was like it's too uh you know you are making a statement and it's it's going to be too political and stuff oh. so i don't oh, this this okay. no, i was like to that okay it's fine i'll make it viral on public like you know on social media uh. stuff, because um social media is, media is there yeah, and, like yeah, you know exactly. you don't have to like rely on traditional like, oh. you have to like go to a radio station <laughs> and you have to wait there and like you know i have this track yeah, yeah, and like yeah. you know if they like it only they're going to play it and mm-hmm. they have you have to pay them and all but i didn't give up mm. so i'm looking on like many more singles now so that's that's, that's hope for the best yeah <laughs> really really wish you the best of luck with that and Thank really looking forward to see that work come out uh apart from your uh your role you said that you you feel inspired by Lana Del Rey and Lady Gaga is there any local artist that you sort of appreciate or follow you you have a sort of a um, you know like you like someone enough to maybe maybe call a role model or who's inspire like, you inspiring you I think you? when it comes to like you know lyrics and stuff mm-hmm. um I like all all these like legendary artists like sort of like the classical classical artists right. like Nanda Malini mm-hmm. and Amrita Deva and like Avitra Ratnayaka um and like there are many more the, yeah, like Chandra yeah. Lekha mm-hmm. like you know oh, and yeah. uh, I love Shashikani Sansala also uh-huh. like her music and her lyrics and stuff is like you know I used to like we used to sing Shashikant mm-hmm. Sansala's songs like karaoke <laughs> whenever we had friends and stuff so like um yeah, yeah there are a few artists okay. and like you know very recent artist also um DJ Mas I think he released a very mm. beautiful single like very recently also and people are changing and like mm. you know a lot of like um collaborations are happening mm. so it's nice to see like uh, even if I'm not working I'm not collaborating with anyone I'm kind of a person I feel really it feels really beautiful that someone is like you know and to be honest with you like talking about johani like mm. you know oh yeah uh, i don't want to talk about the a personal mm, and like mm, you know yeah, the experience yeah. with the sri lankan community and stuff but then again like you know uh, that was crazy right exactly. <laughs> it was really nice to see that i mean like that. she's working with yeah. a lot of like the best producers mm. in india come on yeah of course and like you know it doesn't matter the, it's not about her mm. her name it's about she's representing sri of lanka of course yeah so that is a pride to us so exactly. we need to appreciate that of but course but unfortunately people are not yeah people do enjoy it. kind of uh, anyway looking the other side and seeing what is wrong with this person now and yeah, then coming it, up with it, as an example it doesn't matter like if you don't like my music mm. that's fine mm. but come on if i'm representing my country mm. in some other platform even in another reality show in another country you should be proud yeah. about it because i think she's split basically been able to sort of open that gateway right and then there were other artists who could exactly yeah. they're trying so mm. like it's it's nice to see of course yeah. and i have seen like millions of views for like some other artists mm. also but True. some of the artists are doing some quality work but then again some of the artists like the <laughs> work is okay mm-hmm. but then again the same thing if you could collaborate with someone from you know this this era who would you who do you want to work with <laughs> <laughs> you know i used to work for production 
I okay. used to work for an advertising agency, so uh-huh. I know a lot of people. Um, I feel like I, I really want to collab with Fallon Andrea. Oh, okay. Because um, her vocals are like you know, I like a few of her singles. Mm. I know her personally also. Okay. But um, and also like I have. I have actually like checked in these reality shows very recently from all mm. these channels and I have seen few like you know people who actually have this capacity and like you know some people are like you know uh, trying their best to like be in in, the, in this get into the industry. Mm. I really like to like if I have the capacity or like if I I am on a uh, if I'm stable enough I would like to actually like you know help them out to feature on my tracks. Oh nice. <laughs> That's so kind, that kind a, of what I'm thinking here's of. Here's a discreet shout out to them <laughs> so if they're watching. True. Um my plan is to like have two or three people on my debut album also okay. like so. So basically see. you you are going to have some features. Yes. Okay, nice, nice. Looking forward to that. Uh so I have a little I have a small segment uh, here. It's called Itty Bitty Q&A. Okay. So it's more like a not a, not a rapid fire, but you can just uh, sort of give us little short answers, oh, right? Okay, go for it. Um, have you ever dealt with performance anxiety? Do you ever get uh, do you do you get stage fright? Are you excited? Do you get nervous? I do things perfectly on stage, but the music <laughs> is like the audio and technical problems are like coming up. Kiss the kiss the moment. Yeah, I've gone through it <laughs> any time. What do you like to do during your spare time? Watching movies, horror thrillers. Mm, okay, I love horrors and thrillers as yeah. well. What's your favorite horror? Uh, the movie. <laughs> yeah. Mm. What was the most recent one? Maybe that you watched. Do you remember? Ah. <sighs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I know it's one of those you go blank, you just watch so many and I've seen this and that but I can't remember any names. But like so I I, I, I tell you, I like uh-huh. this thriller called Glory. Oh, the South Korean one, Perfect. right? Oh, yes. yes. I watched it too. That was quite quite yeah, quite the one. Who is your celebrity crush? Local or Um, you can name them. Local. Mm. Or, yeah, I would like to know the local one as well. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's weird. <laughs> Come on. Okay, okay. I'm going to tell um I'm all done on it. <laughs> Why? Celebrity crush. Hmm. The local, right? You can maybe name global. Mm, okay, I go. They will never see this, so <laughs> they wouldn't know. Celebrity, obviously. Um, Lana Del Rey. Mm, okay. Yeah, she is. Orangi lad mambal na samara kala dona har dalan at mara alak fine so like it's it's di- it's a different story. She's like ah. Uh. <laughs> Uh, how did you come up with the name Garping? Did you have uh, like a, a, a set of names that you okay maybe shortlist guys you... like from Lady Gaga? Oh, okay, pink is kind of like pink is pink is kind of a color that uh, represents peace and like you know smoothness mm. and all. So like I felt like oh, we should nice. go with Garping. Yeah, it's quite unique. Very nice. Okay, uh, what's your most annoying habit? Gossiping. Okay. <laughs> I like I love it. <laughs> not so not annoying at all. Um what would you like to be remembered? Uh, what would you like uh to be remembered about you? Okay. <laughs> that that's I'm humble hmm. person. That's it. I don't know. I'm Good really enough. humble with anyone. Yeah. Yeah, it's very easy to talk to you also. So it's very easy to get through to you. 
Okay, last one. Uh, what are you jamming to these days? Is there any new music that you've been listening to? Any new artists or any, not even, whether they're new or old? I recorded specific? my uh, very recent single, like, um, Exotic. Mm. So, so that's uh, uh, another single that's uh, going to be in the, in the Lilac album? No, it's not going to be in the Lilac album. Uh-huh. It's going to be in my uh, debut album. So oh, okay. I'm releasing another single from the debut. Nice. So already, uh, so Precious will be there on the debut album, but not the version that I released. Mm-hmm. It was a house version. Oh, okay. House music. I'm going to re-record it uh, because I love jazz. So I wanted to feel Precious in a mm. jazzy way. Oh, right. So I'm going to okay. record in a jazz version of Precious. So now I have released um, Safira uh-huh. and um, Post Like a Queen. And then uh, Exotic will be releasing very soon. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. So would you say that jazz is your f- most, uh, you favorite jazz to other genres or? No. Um, so, um, so. But you're quite open with, the, like you said, house music and the sort of the club, uh, club hits, uh, club beats, that kind of thing. I wanted to try that all because like. Thanks to one of my friend Dan, I collaborate with him, mm-hmm. uh, and I I actually recorded uh, metal vocals for one of his tracks as okay. well. Okay. So, so uh, people like you know artists like Dan and like you know some other very good like you know they 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 really like you know they want to like you know they they are, they have, they've been very helpful mm-hmm. like you know supporting other artists to like uh, to. Um, try things out in other genres mm. as well because i remember when i was young i i reached out to like some of these producers like very well known producers in sri lanka uh, i like i really want to work with yeah. you and all that they're like and can you please listen to my music and like you know help me out like you know Mm-mm. and they were like oh your genre is not my genre oh. you should try someone else it's just pop and pop and so like <laughs> i feel like people are again putting me back mm. to that box like you know this and that so i felt like okay i want i'm going to try like different genres in my own way and see how it works mm. and then i'm going to like you know i don't want to be a kind of a pop star yeah yeah, yeah. I, i really like to like learn things yeah. really. so obviously mm. so then again i thought of like i'm going to work on few other genres as well so like there will be a few different mm. singles in different genres But in I my album. But I think to have something like that in album is really a really unique thing and at the same time sort of like uh, you you put out your potential to the to the maximum. You exactly. have all of these gen- genres and you you hear one and then the next one surprises you and the third one even surprises you more, right? Um you know we actually running out of time didn't realize that we are close to an hour. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, no, no. Actually we are pretty much done. Oh. Uh but yeah I mean I really I truly appreciate and uh, the re- one of the other uh, reasons that I also wanted to sort of talk to you was when I first I really can't remember how I came across I'm assuming maybe through Instagram okay. maybe yeah, when no? you had released one of her songs and I and because I kind of work not that I have worked with a lot of uh, people from the community I think you sent me an email I did yes and i just thought you know this is exciting this is a really new thing this one this person needs to be recognized because your community needs to uh come out a bit more and the public needs to know that the that the lgbt community is not just not not a one sided thing there's more to them mm. you know so i think that's yeah. why i wanted to also talk to you and i'm so glad that we got this chance and even though it's, it's very small <laughs> I I appreciate that you made the effort. So thank you so much, Ga. We will have to close thank in. Thank you for having me. Most welcome. Before we close in, I think uh, would you like to maybe share uh, your socials and maybe let us know how people can find you? So online? you can find me on Instagram because Instagram is the only one only profile that I I'm actively working mm. on my when it comes to my music. Right. So you can just go and type it's Ga Pink. So you can find me there cool. and you can listen to my music on youtube and itunes and spotify and other platforms as well and appreciate if you could share my music with other people just 
it's not about getting a lot of subscribers mm. and stuff like i'm not looking after money mm. but then again like you know but yeah of course you just g- share my music definitely, if you like it definitely definitely we will make sure that uh, now, now that uh, since uh, the session will be on on the podcast on anchor that anyway also goes on to my socials as well so nice. we, we, oh, your handles will be shared do you have any burning issues to like raise up um <laughs> burning so many <laughs> burning sessions maybe maybe we can do a second session after you know nice. and uh, just uh, before we end is there uh, any upcoming event that you can be a part of or anything that uh, you want to share with us maybe something that you are uh, planning to other than of course launching your album um i'll be uh, supporting nice uh, event that i it's it's actually like um this colombo attract uh-huh. uh club is like doing this reality show called noise i have been there and i i was one of the solo um winner okay. in 2017 i guess yes so they reached out to me and i'll be like helping them out with this year's noise event plus there will be like few uh, events coming up for mm. pride Um, we will look forward to uh, yes. that on your instagram and then. Um, yeah. i'm working on few singles these days mm-hmm. so hopefully i'll be releasing few few soon so soon mm-hmm. and um producers so i if i if a producer any sort of person who really wants to like you know uh work or like you know if i'm i'm telling people like you know if you if, if someone who's an like you know upcoming artist or mm-hmm. like you know if they really need help so they can reach out to me because i would love to help them out with my contacts that's great like you know like i can't guarantee that mm-hmm. okay you might get in but you can do what you like, can basically exactly. yeah Hope and if this. someone is struggling with any sort of um suicidal thoughts or anything or like any if someone is feeling very uncomfortable in any way so there are like a lot of places that i can recommend to recommend them recommend okay. to them so if someone is listening if someone is struggling at this moment like and i just want to tell that don't worry we all are going mm-hmm. through a rough patch and um it's going to be over soon because like uh, everything it won't be there for like for that long mm-hmm. so like keep faith trust yourself trust your instincts and uh, um make sure that you get support even if it's professional or not like reach out to people and don't keep it to yourself so because there are many places and mm-hmm. many people who are there to like support you and you are not alone that's what i have to say thank you so much ka that's a really nice way to end this and again i really hope that uh, we'll be we'll be see more of you in the near future so i wish you all the best Yeah. Again, thank you and I also want to thank uh the Sori Village Recording Studio for uh for helping us with this session thank you. and Denim. Thank you Denim. Upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um so if you have any thoughts, please share it with us and uh look forward to uh hearing from you. Thank you so much for uh listening in to the manifest with me Sara Patrona. Bye. Bye.